Welcome to this short video. It shows the ASO 9K craft tool. With CTO access this can be downloaded for free. We're going to show start up and logging on. After installation on your PC, also runs on Mac by the way and Unix, uh, click on the desktop icon and this will bring up the uh, logging in part. Uh, I've previously added six ASR 9Ks you can see their IP addresses there. They have all share the same username and password so I can log in at the same time to all six. Once logged in we will see the front panels of the first ASR 9K. This is a 9006 and if I select there on the top left another ASO 9000 perhaps a 10 slotter you'll see that the chassis will flip over to the appropriate picture let's take a look at some of the alarms that you can be seen on the 9k You can see here there are different colours and each colour represents the severity of an alarm and the numbers tell you how many alarms are in that particular category for this particular network element or 9K. If I change to a different 9K the alarms will change so that they are appropriate for that particular router. For example there, there are a couple of critical alarms. Information there about the ASO 9K, the IP address and so on. If you hover your cursor over the uh, front panel, it will tell you the status of the uh, particular interface or port. If you right click you can then show alarms for that particular port or that particular card. You can also click on the tab at the top of the uh, diagram to look at all the alarms for all of the 9K. OK, let's look at some interfaces on the 9K. If you right click onto a line card, you can see that you can drill down to a particular port. This brings up a splash screen showing you the configlet or the interfaces there. Then you'll see the configlet down there for that particular interface and also the port counters for that interface is shown and you can select to auto refresh in this case say every five seconds. This is just to show you the network diagram that we used for this particular lab. This recording was done after a particular customer and it was convenient because I already had six uh, 9Ks already built and up and running. The uh, ABCD stuff is on the outside of the Spirant tester ports. And this is some of the screens of the Spirant test center. We're going to click on start traffic in a moment uh, and then you'll see blue arrows appear indicating that traffic's flowing. We're sending a thousand packets a second so we have one millisecond of resolution for one packet. This is looking at the results of the traffic arriving at the test center from across the network and you can see the rate of in bits per second also in frames per second.
So let's go back to the 9K. Select the appropriate ASO 9K and then take a look at the individual port. So it's gigabit 00019 is what we're looking at. And now I'll be selecting that particular port, gigabit 00019. Okay, once you select that, it brings up this screen. And you can see now there's a sub interface on that gigabit 00019. And if I select that, you get the configlets for that particular sub interface on the bottom of the pane. And all the port counters and interface counters are shown. Here I'm using um, a dot one q interface with a couple, about four VLANs being used on the same interface. Do some refreshing every five seconds. That's just me showing you there's, there's a running config. And then you should see the interface counters now incrementing as time goes on. OK, now let's take a look at what's in the box. Serial numbers and part numbers and stuff. The inventory. If you click on the top tab, you get a selection of the chassis and all of the components therein and you, as you slide along you pick up different there we can see we're using up operating system uh, 421 uh, iOS XR and you can grab a column and drag it across to make it more convenient for whatever you desire really so if you want the serial number near the front you can move it over when you click on one of the rows uh, details of the row are blown out into the pane underneath you can see that I've selected that row and the information for that particular chord is shown there. This this is the alarms again, uh, I alluded to before, and um this gives you is another way of looking at the alarms in the chassis. Again you can sort them by uh column alphabetically sorted if you want to. And as you again select on a row the uh, bottom pane shows you the detail of what's in that row. There's all my interfaces, are they up or down? MTUs and so on. Now we'll take a look at how the craft tool helps you with the software packages on the left hand side after the uh, screen is refreshed you can see the active packages in the running uh, router on the right you've got inactive packages so what's happened here is that from a previous install we've upgraded to 421 and the old packages are still on the uh, router we could at some point, if we wanted to, roll back to the previous operating system, but we're happy to just delete these off the box, off the router. So this is what I'm selecting now. This can all be done with the command line interface, and um, this is a, a different way of doing it, really. Uh, it's more pictorial, and you can see what's going on. Eventually, you'll see the uh, packages on the right disappear. The disk we use on the root processor, the root switch processor, is disk zero for this. And um, what you'll find is if you don't get rid of these old packages, you'll run out of disk space. And it'll become quite apparent when you uh, go for an upgrade, if you haven't removed the old packages. You can see it disappearing now. This selection here also allows you to FTP new packages from a FTP server down to the router. You can see they're all gone now. We can look at the, the widget on the right, the memory, and uh, we can scroll down to look at disk zero. Uh, on the right there you can see that um, like a bar showing you the percentage of memory used for each memory uh, 
memory device. And there's the disk zero on root switch processor zero. There it is. Now we're going to select the, in just a moment, the command line helper. This is um, quite useful for someone uh, who is in a supporting role and wants to cherry pick uh, from a list of uh, commands. You can see it there helping me um, as I'm typing the particular show commands in and stuff. I think the show battery one isn't a good one to show. We'll do a show platform in a second. And you can save some commands, the uh, most useful ones, so that um, an inexperienced operator could just cherry pick these particular commands and, sh and do the show commands. Then you can either copy the result to the uh, clipboard or you can uh, save it as a ASCII text file. There I'm showing uh, one of the services, a, a layer 2 VPN cross connect. There is a widget that allows us to look at these cross connects, which I'll show you in just a minute. So here's a, a widget, which, which is a, a button on the right hand side of the uh, screen, and you select cross connects, and this shows you all of the uh, well, shows you the cross connects that you you choose a filter because you could have thousands and thousands of them on the node on the router. So we'll click on the cross connects. Uh, okay, you can't see this, but I'm running two monitors and it popped up on the other monitor. So here I'm selecting the group and then the cross connect uh, ID. As you select the uh, cross connect you get the config lit on the bottom left and you get the counters port counters and stuff on the right hand side and I'm just selecting an auto refresh of five seconds this is a, a sudo y connection that uh, provides uh, a private y support across an MPLS network for a customer Again, there's another widget that shows you um, bridge domain services. And uh, you can click on that, and then you can go and filter out by group, and then within that group, what particular bridge domain you're interested in. And these are all the segments and sub interfaces attached to this particular bridge domain. As usual, you'll get your running configs and your port counters on the top. As you select more and more uh, items, uh, more columns get added to the right hand side. Except the tabulated. Now if you look at the top and you can click on a tab and uh, you don't lose any information. So this is just showing you the different pseudo wires going off to different um, MPLS uh, endpoints or not MPLS endpoints, but the loopback addresses of uh, my my uh, distant routers. There's um, 10.002 and 10.004 and so on, and they're the target. This is the network diagram, and you can probably see there a remark there that the loopbacks are all set to 10.00.x, and then the x is incremented. Another widget: fans and power supply status. So you can click on the fans and it shows you the RPM of the fans. One second it moved over. Two fan trays and they should be running about 700 and something revolutions per minute. Obviously if a fan slows down or stops you'll see it there. 
finally uh, we're going to look at the power and uh, this t shows you power module 0, 1 and 2 I think on here we have and uh, module 2 is uh, not installed so that's why it's showing 0 there's a yet another widget for your licenses on your router this is a, again a more convenient way of seeing your licenses you can uh, use the CLI by telnetting or SSHing into the router but the license manager makes, a, makes it very clear and easy to see presently I don't have any uh, licenses on on this box but uh, this would show you what features I had and where they were located uh, you also get uh, telnet or SSH or AND and that's up at the top of the middle of the um, screen and um, you just double click and you log into your uh, ASR 9K the lookup widget is very nice this allows you to dive into uh, your running config and uh, if you look here I'm going to say uh, for example show router show run router ISIS and the iOS XR very neatly gives us the config for ISIS you can get the same uh, idea from the the widget the lookup widget and you can see these are all of your if you like technologies in the running config and selecting or checkboxing one will then show you the configlet just for that particular um, configuration very nice indeed and this is just showing it from the telnet the uh, running config and also what's uh, from the uh, SR craft tool and there you can see I select different technologies and it shows you the different um, configlets for that in clicking that you get everything and then you can copy to clipboard or save it away somewhere there I'm just matching certain IP addresses in this case command line creation templates this is quite interesting this allows you to um, uh, make say you want a thousand sub interfaces um, then with this template manager uh, you can create very large um, configlets for services and stuff this is another part it, if you, it's a troubleshooter and just test the uh, if DNS is there and whether you've got connectivity with your um, ASR 9K satellite management iOS XR 4.2 dot two dot one brought in the concept of the satellite uh, devices ASR 9000s and V's and this allows us to have uh, a remote device called the satellite and you can see them on this drawing uh, and they have 44 SFP gigabit ports and you can control them as if they were a line card uh, built into the 9K and here is a diagram of the uh, 9000V and now we're coming to the end thank you for watching and listening and um, hope it was useful to you this is Peter O'Reilly thank you very